I'm Angela Clutton, and it's my huge joy to be able to work on the food season with Polly Russell and with Melissa Thompson. Um, hello to the yous in the theatre, but also we have lots of people joining us online, so hi to you guys too. Um, you online have a little tab where you can ask questions, and you have a little tab where you can buy books. Those of you here, IRL, can buy books at the end as well, these guys are <laughs> going to sign them. Um, social media everywhere obviously, um, and has had just the most enormous impact on the food community, how we feed ourselves, how we think about food, how we engage with others in the food community. Um, some of us love it, maybe these guys, some of us hate it, that'd be me, um, but not many of us can really kind of ignore it. Um, we have an absolutely brilliant panel here tonight, uh, led by Itamar Shrudovic, who is one half of Honey & Co, and a source of joy, I think, on social media. So he's going to lead us through. Thank you. you are, darling, you are. Um, he's going to lead us through. So I shall hand over to Ismail. Thank you so much. Woo! Very, very few people have called me a source of joy. Um, but I'll, I'll try and uh, live up to it. It's a high bar. Hi. So I'm not actually scrolling. You know, I'm not, I'm not doing my, my socials right now. I have all my notes on this, and this is kind of like uh, part of the thing now. We're, we're always with our phones, and we're always kind of like a little bit here, a little bit there, but we're all on silent, and we're all on airplane mode here. Uh, That's what we're supposed to be. <laughs> Chetna. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Started. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We have an amazing panel here that's going to cover all of social media. Tomorrow morning, we're going to wake up to a new dawn, and all of our social media and food issues will be resolved, right? Yeah. Yes. We have the wonderful Chetna Makan here. We have Poppy O'Toole. We have Ed Smith. Big hand to all of them. Uh, so we're going to start a little bit with establishing your sort of social media likes and dislikes. Your favorite accounts? Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, I've taken pictures. I'm rubbish with names. Uh, <laughs> so um, one of the people I love following is an Indian chef, uh, Saranj Koela, and his account brings so much joy. And I, if I've seen his video, I cannot scroll past. I absolutely look forward to his stuff. The other one I absolutely love is Caroline, uh, who is an American-based um, food writer, and I absolutely love her stuff. She is just talks to you and kind of everyday stuff, but she again brings joy, you know, into the food. So I absolutely love her account. Amazing. You're, you're following already, yeah? <laughs> Poppy, yours? Uh, mine is more of like a guilty pleasure sort of one. So there's this guy on TikTok called Corey's World. Um, and he's a Welsh guy, and it's him and his girlfriend, and they base it's what I eat in a day, most of it. Like, it's not cooking, but it is one of the best things I've ever seen in my life. They have, like, a pizza for breakfast. It's like, this is oh. the way I want to live. Yeah. But they have, like, a pizza for breakfast. Aspirational yeah. lifestyle, yeah. Cold hot. Hot for breakfast. Strong. And then, like, with mayo and chips. Ooh. What a combination. What? Yeah, absolutely. And then they'll have, like, he'll be like, I can't do a Welsh accent, so I'm not going to try it. Uh, and then he'll be like, I'm getting a triple cheese. I'm, I'm eating healthy, so I'm only having a triple cheeseburger and tw 20 chicken nuggets for lunch. And I'm like, yeah, that's exactly what yeah, I'm Yeah, that's a, that's a detox. And then it's like, then he has tea, then he has dinner, and then he has a late dinner. And it is just like, that is, if I could live like that, I will live like that one day. That is my aspiration. Yeah, I'm yeah, going to dip it all in and just eat pizza for breakfast. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. That is how I want to live. This so is the dream. Is, I know it's not particularly like food food, but it's that is how I want to eat. So, <laughs> yeah. one of my yours, things. Ed, which is your, uh, what got, makes your... I've got authentic. three kind of low-key good things. So, as in low-key but good cooks. So, Millie Taylor's been on Instagram for as long as I have, and she's a brilliant cook and chef, and also just is a really nice insight into her, her life and her work. Um, and I feel like I'm engaged with it because it's nice and good, not because she's trying to be anything. Yeah. Uh, new account, uh, a friend of mine called Jesse has an account called... Uh, Adip, it might be Adip Food, um, but Adip standing for Another Day in Paradise. And he's a former photographer slash film student who makes, who also has worked as a chef and he makes beautiful little vignettes about good, tasty food. Um, and one of the mob guys at the moment, Ben Lippitt, um, Dinner by Ben, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think he's really nice to watch. Okay, wh which account did you unfollow recently? 
Uh, do you know, I, I'm, we should talk about this later, because I'm really bad at unfollowing, so my, my account is cluttered. I think I probably unfollow brands that I follow, that I don't have in a specific. Okay, Sorry. okay, you're doing a, a brand cleanse. Yeah. How about you guys? Yeah, I think I started following too many restaurants, and I yeah. thought, why do I need to follow? Not you, I'm still following. Yeah, of Honey course. Of Needless to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think I was just like, I'm not going there. I don't live there. Uh, why am I following these restaurants? For yeah. So I have cleansed the restaurants a yeah. lot. Um, so it's more of a housekeeping thing. Yeah. Yeah, you have to keep yeah. updated with it because you know you also meet so many people, and um, I will still follow you guys. But I <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Back every you week. follow them. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But after two, three years, <laughs> you think, "Oh my God, when did I meet?" Like, I what, why am I yeah, following? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you have to. Um, yeah, you, you have to just do to a keep your timeline nice I'm and good fresh. Maintenance. I am not an unfollower at all. As soon as I follow, I in for me, it's this sounds terrible, guys. Uh, unless they've unfollowed me. I will not unfollow. Yeah, but how would you oh, really? know they've unfollowed because, you? Because oh, you can go online and just search who's unfollowed you. you yeah, can, I haven't done that things. much time now. You, and and uh, you can see who's unfollowed you. But I, in for me, because of growing up in like Facebook era, an unfollow is like, it's ugh, like, like that's it. So I would yeah. never start that war. Uh, <laughs> but I'll just participate in it if they unfollow me. <laughs> wow. You want to bring it? Yeah, Hello. that's it. Yeah. Okay. You are you aware of the con the concept of hideous? Do you know what it is? Tell us. Is when you when you you following <laughs> an account and you watch them and you hate them, but you'll never unfollow because it's like picking a scab. You're like, oh. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> uh, there are a couple of accounts I have to say, but they're not. They are food kind of related, which is why I started following yeah. them. But they're not really doing food related stuff anymore. Yeah. And oh. I don't want to. It's all about life lessons, and I just annoy oh. the <laughs> hell out. Of I love the life lessons. Seriously. Oh, give me the life lessons. Oh my god! And so much hatred towards the followers, and I think, why are you here? Just get off and live a healthier life. Just you know, <laughs> I'm stuck. I can't follow them. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but no, you, but it, it riles you up. I'll go first. Yeah. But I've, do um, you know the guy that makes really elaborate sort of cakes that look like fruit, Cedric Grolet? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which but I kind of like, I find it fascinating, yeah. but yeah. I also, why are you doing this? I hate it. But also I went to his bakery <laughs> and his stuff is amazing, but yeah. also like, what are you doing, man? Why do you hate it? Because it's like, it's so like, it's so over the top and crazy and excessive. <laughs> and it's like, I think for when, when you... But you haven't unfollowed, you still, you love I love it. Yeah. And I search him out to say like, oh yeah, what are you what doing? Do you do? <laughs> but then it gets me angry and... and That's brilliant. Yeah, but, it, but this is what I'm kind of like, we have this really strange relationships yeah. to, the, to, the, to our feed. And really weird things come up and, and it's kind of like quite surprising because it's, it, you know, we kind of control it, we kind of curate it, but it's not really, is it? No, you know, mine's it's mukbang. Like, sorry? I'm obsessed with mukbang videos. What is it? Mukbang is someone eating, I think it derived from uh, China, I think, or, you know, um, the Far East it came from. And it's people eating so much food oh. and it's really oh, noisy. Yeah, and it's oh, like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Whilst they eat, and it's incredible, but it makes me feel sick yeah, at the same I can time. Yeah, I can spend. Um, and sometimes, like, there'll be like there'll be turtles being it, and I'm like, I don't want to watch this, but I also really want to watch <laughs> this at the same time, and I want to try that food, yeah. and I'm like, <laughs> and it makes my skin crawl, but I love it at the same time. Yeah, yeah, I hear you, I hear you. Uh, guys, tell us okay. each one of you about your weapon of choice. You all have very different mediums. Discuss. Chetna, you begin. Um, mine is YouTube. Yeah. Um, I love YouTube. Um, that's my favorite. You know, I look forward to um, recording something for YouTube, but it's not uh, scripted or it's not planned. Yeah. So if I'm right, like yesterday, I made a cake for my parents, I filmed it. So if I'll make something for my kids, I'll film it. And I could be wearing pajamas, which most of the times I am in my <laughs> YouTube videos. And it's... Um, I mean, your, your pajamas are more elegant <laughs> yeah. than anything I ever own, but okay. But it is... Well, you're, style, you're the stylishest, yeah. No, but it is... Um, it's my favorite because it's my kitchen, my home kitchen. It is my um, everyday life. And yeah, um, I get to share that with my audience. So YouTube is my favorite medium. Yeah, and it's having a little bit of a moment now. It's sort of... I think... Uh, 
I think we will discuss this uh, in a bit, but for me, it's not about what is, I've never been on TikTok, sorry. Um, I've just TikTok is not for me. Yeah. <laughs> just, just not for me because um, I only uh, made an account in lockdown because my daughter wanted to do some dance videos with me. So my TikTok videos were dance videos with my daughter. So I just think I've never been a trend follower. Even when I was working in fashion, I never followed the color that were forecast. I just don't want to follow trends because that's ridiculous, which is why I don't think uh, just because YouTube is having a moment, I'm there. I've been there for yeah, a few yeah. years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you sure. can repurpose your YouTube content into a 60 second TikTok content and then you're covering two platforms with one stone. So that's what I do for Instagram. I use okay. my, tic well, my Instagram. Put it on there as well. <laughs> it, so that's, that's, that's how I see all of the social media platforms. I thought you were going to say what I was thinking and that I would love to see you dancing with your daughter on TikTok. Oh yeah, and that. I yeah. think that would be magic. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Um, oh. Downside of the platform, what do you, what's difficult for you about it? Uh, oh, I don't think, for me, I, I, I personally don't think there's a downside. I have had very slow growth and sometimes I feel frustrated because it's not. But then I sit back and think I'm not doing anything specially for it. I, I film it, I edit it, I post it, I respond. So I'm a one man band. I haven't got an assistant. So, um, and then if I see the progress and the growth, I'm very happy with it. Yeah. So it has to be, I can hire a team, but do I want a team is the question. Child labor, I think, was mentioned. Yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. <laughs> sorry. I have a team. Yeah. I have two you have a team, you just pay them with food and giving birth to them rather than... Uh, Poppy, tell us about TikTok. So TikTok is my main platform where I've got four million followers. Wow. But it is very fickle, I suppose, TikTok is. Whereas if you've got a YouTube, you've got dedicated subscribers. So four million followers doesn't necessarily translate into anything else because you follow someone for one video, you might never see them again on your For You page unless you search them out. So there's a, f there's a small community of people who have followed me on TikTok for years, uh, <laughs> Paul's in the audience. Um, and so there are some, you know, more dedicated community in there, but it's, it's, it can be come and go whether people are gonna stay on top of what you're doing and it's a constant. So you have to be posting every single day to be relevant within TikTok um, and to have your videos being pushed out. Like I've been busy in life, so I haven't had the time to be doing that much content. So I've seen a decline in the videos that I do put out as and when I can, don't get the reach like they did when I was doing uh, series of food uh, content. So it's, it's a, more of a, a fickle way. And I think everyone goes like, oh, the algorithm, but does not really. You, it's consistency is the algorithm yeah, on TikTok. Yeah, but you kind of like, you, you've touched on it about the sort of cross pollination because I I, <coughs> I know you from Instagram, so I've, I've seen all your content there. Yeah. And that's kind of like hitting another. Yes, exactly. So I use the same, uh, I repurpose. So I started with TikTok initially uh, when I started and then I kind of tried to channel people over to my Instagram because that is where we very, uh, usually know like where the the work comes into yeah. it sort of thing you know with brand deals and all that sort of stuff and that's where you can kind of make a living from more so on Instagram it's definitely changed now where you can do both so I was initially just repurposing all the videos that I put on um, you go on to I use I get really annoyed about uh, you know the little stamps of TikTok it says it comes up with your thing yeah. if you put it onto Instagram so I go over I transfer all them and download them so they get no stamp on it put it onto my Instagram, put a trending Instagram song onto it, and then it's its own, another Branding. video. Yeah. Uh, so I always repurpose them. And again, Pinterest is one that you can repurpose them onto and is a really big growing platform for creators as well. Um, and you can do YouTube shorts as well now. So it's, it's, it's repurposing, because all of these people on these different platforms are a completely different audience. They yeah. probably haven't seen your stuff before. Yeah. So you can uh, monopolize on all of them. <laughs> Ed on Instagram, ruining my Friday morning with your eggs that I salivate <laughs> over. Um, I, yeah, Instagram's I, my thing, I suppose. This is well, not media. like Poppy said, it's not like. Um, but I, uh, I've been on it ever since it started, like 11 or 12 years ago, growing gradually, organically alongside other things that I do, never trying to peak, and then occasionally getting jealous of people that go, 
like that. So I think what I love about Instagram is I think you still can feel like it's a community of people of well wishers. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like creating stuff visually. I do a lot of writing. Um, so the pictorial and now video content is, an, is enjoy, remains enjoyable for me. What I dislike, I suppose, is uh, that I feel like I've been turned into a one-man content creation studio yeah. for the benefit of Meta. <laughs> uh, and, but I can't leave it because it's, it is part of my portfolio of things that I do. Um, so it's a sort of give and take situation. And also, I don't, I don't feel like unless you play the game, uh, I like to pretend that I don't care about what it means or growth and that success, which we're going to touch on. Yeah. But equally, I don't necessarily think that actually probably social media in general rewards quality uh, mm. unless you really try. Yeah. Actually. Yeah, yeah. Okay, interesting. But let's let's talk the, let's talk about that a little bit. Let's talk about success. What, what, what? How? Oh, wait. Like just like a minute before, let's talk about the business model, about how it works, because it is to you know some extent or another, it's it's quite time consuming, and it is almost it can be a job. You know how much? How does it work for each of you? How much time do you put in? What do you get out? It's a touchy question. Mm. Uh, it's, it's so different to when it started. When social media started 10, yeah. 15 years ago, that could be... I, I started doing a lot of stuff on Instagram because I changed career from being a corporate lawyer. And I went to catering college. And whilst we were there, we were encouraged to take pictures of our food. And as that happened, that was sort of 2012. So I was able to take pictures of great food, put them on the internet, as it was part of my life rather than, and then when people with a hobby starting now if you want to put content on the instagram generally it's, it takes a lot of time a lot of it's video content unless you're happy to put something you're walking around doing your day which i'm not yeah that is a that is a job to create a film whether it's 10 seconds or one minute yeah it is um, and, and actually the standards are yeah and quite it, high yeah so i i tell myself that i have one to two days a week to film and edit stuff i don't know what the and i the reality and i, I try I, I because i'm not very good at because i'm a man not very good at like doing lots of things at once so i have to compartmentalize and in theory i want to give myself one or two days to do that sometimes that work will be actual work paid content that companies are paying me to promote their products with other times i have to tell myself that it is being productive because the paid work doesn't come unless you're constantly creating stuff and uploading two good things a week plus yeah. a bit of, I, sp- I spend quite a lot of time in Instagram stories which is much more kind of off the cuff and easy and fine and I don't feel like I'm taking lots of time doing it but yeah. the actual content creation is now definitely something that I think I either need to spend one or two days a week or one week a month otherwise I just don't get my books written I don't get recipe articles done it just doesn't happen yeah because it can really drift into your yeah that's the thing. it's really hard to, to limit it but still you know one or two days a week that's that's a part-time job you know yeah that's, yeah, yeah. yeah. But i just I, i'm i think some people are much better at making a very quick reel or a quick TikTok. Yeah. um i have a certain uh tendency to maybe overdo things for, but because i want to create something that's good and that i'm proud of yeah. putting out there yeah you probably how, how does it work for you so my i used to be a chef uh worked for 10 years in kitchens and it's 70 hour weeks you know it's it's hard uh social media is harder I would like purely because it doesn't end. Mine doesn't stop. It never. Do you know what? I I want. I'm glad you, all my chefs want to be like uh, social media stars. Yeah. So I'm I'm interested it's, that you say that. It's like Ed said. Like if a brand comes in and wants you to do a job, the turnaround is usually like a week. They give you no notice whatsoever. They want it get it done. They want edits. They want to control voiceovers. You need to change the style of your cooking. So that's like one, two, three day job, depending on how many edits they want. If most of the time I get it wrong the first time, so I have to do it again uh, <laughs> because I never read the brief properly. Oh. But um, and then, like you said, you've got to get your own content out. And if uh, especially for TikTok, like I was saying, the consistency. So it's every day one or two recipes that I need to make um, to get content flowing and to also get a backup if I am going away or if I need yeah. to do something else. You know, you've got to constantly be doing it. And then when it comes to Instagram, uh, I do a lot of stories as well because, and then I do my everyday sort of thing. So it's, uh, you know, 
I do. So you're still on the 70 hour weeks? So basically, it just it doesn't really end. And then yeah. again, like you're saying, if you're doing um, articles and stuff, and then it's like sitting and writing, and that's a whole nother. I mean, I'm terrible at sitting at a computer and writing. I'd rather be cooking something. So then I just strap myself for hours until the last minute before I have to send it. Spend time browsing. And spend time just oh, scrolling. Yeah. Scroll. So it's the doom scroll. Yeah, yeah, the doom scroll. So I find it. It's a lot. It's a lot of work. Um, but I don't have anything else going on. If you know what I mean. This has become my life. Yeah. And it's so you're now completely leaned into it. I'm completely in now, yeah. yeah. And um, even if you know, if we go on holiday or have a week off, it doesn't stop. I've still got all the emails coming through. All that you know, we do all the admin on the on the side. But the business plan of it never was gonna. It was never meant to be. You know, I was doing social media because of lockdown and just carried on. And so I think it's eased into it, just being my constant now. Um, and so it's now. Now I know the end goal, I suppose, is what I'm trying to achieve. Okay. This is... What's that? What's that? Yeah, I'm curious. <laughs> that. Uh, the end goal is to basically be Nigella. Okay. <laughs> Fair um, and I got called the council estate Nigella, and I was like, okay, I'm almost there, guys. Okay, I am almost okay. there. Yeah. Uh, so I just, I really enjoy this. I love teaching people how to cook. You know, and I get to teach millions of people over the past few years, you know, even if it's a potato recipe, which seems like a really simple thing to do, being able to hopefully make someone's day by making them delicious roast potatoes that they've made for their family. So being able to teach more people that through books, through articles, through YouTube, through TikToks, through that's what I want to be able to do. Um, and I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy it. So... It has encompassed my life, but I, I've. But this is what this, this is, is what I've enjoyed doing, yeah. And can I uh, ask kind of like a very sort of rude question? Feel free not to answer. But do you pay the bills? Like, does it does that it work? Is, that was as soon as I in the beginning of lockdown when I had lost my job. As soon as a job came in, and I was like, okay, cool. That's like a bit of my rent. Great. Let's see if we can get another one. That's a bit more of my rent. And as so, as long as I can pay my half of the rent. I'm like, yeah, I'm in. So yeah. that has just um, carried on from there. And I've been able to, my partner has left his job and he works for me now. So I have some, he edits my videos for me. So that cuts down a big yes. chunk of my time. But you still have to become a videographer, an editor, a yeah. producer, a writer. Um, also the mess I make in my kitchen is yeah. well. So yeah. also uh, a kitchen porter. Um, a grocery, you do so, you, there's so many elements to it and it's developing dishes and trying to work out a time plan for those. And so it, it's more than just, oh, you just pick up your phone and record something. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, there's so many more levels to it. And yeah. then it's the copywriter for, for the, the posts. You need to know, is it, what hashtags are you going to use? What's your copy going to be? Um, is this going to be a series? You know, it's just, there's a lot of things that go into it. And, and the further you want to grow it, which I'm trying to do, uh, the more things you realise you have, like this... You need to learn. You could have a team yeah. of people, and it's just me and my boyfriend, like, um, <laughs> so what should we do next? <laughs> what can we do? What can we actually fit in to yeah. try and carry that, on? That's the thing. I think we're so used to just, you know, reaching out for our phones and seeing, you know, all these people mm -hmm. goofing around and, you know, everything from, you know, delicious potatoes to, you know, and chlorine a drain, we just assume that there's going to be someone to do it for, to show us how yeah. it's done. But actually, there's so much work yeah. goes into these things that we, you know, even even us that we know it, kind of for, very easily forget it, don't oh, we? Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I used to think, like, influencers, like, oh, it's so easy. It's easy doing yeah. that stuff on, like, oh, no, it's so yeah. much more difficult. I suppose there's different elements. Food's difficult one because there's so much more behind it you know there's development of recipes there's all, all of that and, and if it goes wrong you've got to start again <laughs> which yeah. is never good but um but yeah it's, it's a difficult one to do um and but it it can be worth it absolutely. yeah okay Chetna my love how's, how's yours I think it's almost the same the only difference is I work seven days a week there is no Saturday Sunday um but I can choose to work around my kids, around my family. I don't want to miss a day in their life. And I, that's my priority. I know what I want. And I think this gives me that uh, independence, that freedom yeah. that I can work around the hours, around their 
school pickup, drop off, or whatever they have to be taken around, being a taxi for them. Um, and I don't want to miss out on any of this. So it is a full-time job, 100%. Um, and like I said, it is me working alone. I, I wish I could. <laughs> I can I can't lend out my boyfriend. Uh, <laughs> rent him out. Yeah. Oh my God, I can't even ask my, like we don't talk work. Like we just, me, me and my husband just don't talk work. It's not something, you know, I will ask him for advice, but it is, now I feel he doesn't know what he's talking about. He has yeah. no idea of the industry. Yeah. Why am I asking he's him? Not that, he's not down with the kids. Yeah, exactly. You know, so I've stopped asking him. Uh, so yeah, it is a it is a properly full time job. But I've always said that I'll do it till I enjoy it, um, and uh, which is one of the reasons I didn't join TikTok because even when uh, my kids uh, made me join TikTok, I thought. This is like, I am wasting, I'm not learning anything. In Instagram, at least when you're browsing, you might learn something about cooking or gardening or, you know, <coughs> depending on what, uh, you know, you're following. You might pick a trick or something. TikTok, I just, I thought I'm just wasting my life away. So I don't want to, you, you know, I, you can get stuff. No, no, not by Someone creating. Someone talking about potatoes. No, no, not yeah. yet. <laughs> <laughs> not creating, but by watching. <laughs> And you know, it just, it can suck you in for yeah, hours. Yeah, absolutely. And absolutely. then you, I would rather read a book or watch a movie. What is a book? What's a movie? <laughs> yeah. I saw TV once, I think. Uh, no, but let, let's, this is actually quite interesting because we, we're, we all sort of uh, touching on traditional sort of media on print and broadcast. Are these things, is this the future? Is this the past? Is this, because, Ed, I know that you've done many tremendous books. Chetna, likewise. Poppy, I think you have one coming. I have one coming. Yeah, I've had one out, and I've got one coming. One out, out yeah. and one coming. Um, fantastic things, and, you know, involved in broadcast as well. How how does that sit it's all in this of, new I landscape? I think at the, moment, at the moment, it has to be just part of a portfolio of things. And for people who haven't got a regular column or are on TV, then social media is their platform and how the, yeah. my platform and how I get work or promote myself. Um, I think, and, and then you, and you can, I think the, the problem is you just, we just cannot predict what the next 10, 20 mm. years are going to be like in media and our consumption of it. So you, you want to be like well, I just hedging your bets. Just keep doing everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the main thing. But so I, I know that there are plenty of agent management agencies, for example, who view probably rightly, social media, whether that's Instagram or TikTok in particular, as the core earning capability of the people that they work with um, because of the partnerships that come in. What I find quite interesting is how whether a million, four million followers on a, on a channel converts to book sales. It probably doesn't give nearly as much benefit as going on, on morning television. So currently, we, I think we can get really sucked into thinking that social media is the mm. most important thing. Mm -hmm. But in terms of actual people and your, your longevity as a person in media, yeah. then the mainstream is still the thing. It's still the place for to For credibility, for, for, for you average Joe who isn't spending their life scrolling Instagram. But I totally agree. And I, I think um, in that particular viewpoint, I find that um, these days, like you mentioned, influencer, I've heard that name after such a word after such a long time, because that word has kind of disappeared and content creators has taken, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. because influencers, I think was a very easy job. But I think content creation is a complete different story. But I think these very um, young content creators, absolutely amazing content. But I find that they are obviously picking up stuff from somewhere. They haven't got life experiences or they haven't even eaten half the stuff they're sharing. Right. You know, on... Um, they're good at creating stuff that becomes viral or watched, but can they actually deliver on... Exactly. And I think uh, they have all got massive followings overnight uh, and absolutely fine to each their own. But how much of that will get translated if they did happen to write a book, which be quite, would be quite interesting because I, for one, would not be buying their books because you know what I mean? They haven't got, um, yeah, I just find that uh, uh, it, it's just picked up from places and you can see that they actually haven't created any of it, mm. which I find extremely <laughs> frustrating. Extremely. Sorry, just went. Um, no, I, I get you, but actually, it's it's you've sort of touched on on longevity on longevity, 
Uh, and that's a really sort of interesting uh, place for me to think about what what is what is success in this mess? Like, what is, how do we, is it very, is it many followers? Is it reach? Is it, you know, m what is success to you in that I in think that I don't even go and look at the reach and stuff. I just want to create. And what I find extremely enjoyable is the DMs and the emails I get from mm -hmm. people from around the world who have watched a YouTube or have, for me, YouTube and my books are the key kind of teaching points. And I want to educate, I want to learn uh, as much as I can, keep going back and learn more and come back and share it. Um, when they uh, email back, whether they've said that they've got an Indian partner or they've cooked this for their mother-in-law, their parents have died and they've created this, or I'm a 70 year old man living somewhere and I've created curry for the first time. And things like that is just, I do it for that, and I sometimes don't even know what my reach is, what my, uh, you know. I but I think, I think in. You know, in sorry, you're not paying any attention at all. Like, you must. No, I, I pay attention to I followers. Do. I pay attention, oh, right. I, have I, kind of, okay. but I don't go beyond, because sometimes brands have asked me, what is your, right. and I think, um, I have no idea, you, you know. It's quite a healthy way to. But you can get sucked. I don't, uh, life's too short. I've got other things. You know? <laughs> oh, but they're really, you know, I think I've, I've known you for, I don't know, a few years. And there is, Chetna does have a, around her a very Ooh. loving group. Mm. Yeah. A very, very loving group. And, and you can see on, on your videos always the comments are, you know, it's a very sort of positive. cozy, yeah. positive place very that, positive. that you've created. Yeah, so it doesn't uh, matter. So I believe I, her. <laughs> <laughs> She's not, she's, not, she's not bullshitting us, I don't think. <laughs> uh, Poppy, what is success? Uh, after you've become Nigella, like... After, no, 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 I think... Th that, that's the aim for all of us, I think. Yeah, that's kind of like basically. entry level, we are going to be Nigella. Um, it'll, be, it'll be fine. It'll be yeah, fine. it'll yeah. be fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, um, success for me has been um, basically being able to use... Yes, I'm encompassed in this life and I really enjoy it, but it's been able to enjoy my time in that as well. Um, I never set out for, this was never my intention. I didn't have social media before yeah. this. I had like my personal Instagram with some people from school who I probably unfollowed actually. That, I might have lied. <laughs> <I might. laughs> um, you know, but there was like, it was never. But who unfollowed first? Probably yeah, them yeah. actually, yeah. It's always that way. Too many potatoes. Um, yeah. <laughs> no such thing. <laughs> Not for them. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, being able to uh, spend time with, friends and family more so than working in kitchen 70 hours a week all that sort of stuff yeah that for me has been a success you know i i yes i have intentions of being like nigella it, if that doesn't happen it doesn't happen and that's fine i'm i'm very happy with how everything is um and it's it i i never take any of it for granted this is this could all change in a second. Like if if all social media then gets like taken off, yeah. I've had a lovely time. TikTok is it's under serious uh, risk now. Isn't I know it? that's yeah. why I'm saying Pinterest, yeah. YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I I already think that there's there's been too much success already. But there's no I don't think there's any way to quantify that. Um, yeah, I'm happy. If that makes With sense. With the situation. Yeah. So okay. Okay. That's how I. That's how Edge, I. Edge yours. Um, my idea, I, I, I would be lying if I said I didn't want to have more followers. No, I don't want to say that and I don't want yeah. to feel that, but I feel, no, it's, it's, I feel like yeah. follower growth within social media is, represents uh, some sort of response to what you're doing uh, and maybe also provides potential. As I said, I see social media as part of a portfolio of the things that I do. Social media, writing cookbooks, doing articles and something else occasionally. And um, and the other things don't happen so well if the social media isn't growing and being engaged. And so on a, on a kind of a small, on an occasional basis, not occasional, on when I put content out, if it bombs or if it doesn't do as well yeah. as you hope, then that feels unsuccessful on a very short term basis. On a longer term basis, I guess I feel like I'm trying to at least tread water as other people grow <laughs> and ideally grow beyond that. To, to yeah. help the rest of my career, which is yeah, it, it is that it is your your sort of your shop front yeah, in a sense. 
I want to talk a little, go back a little bit to the area of, of community and the people. Uh, I know, you know, like what I said about Chennai, you do get a lot of love from the people who consume that content. We've said this word so many times. Yeah, we're not going to say content. <laughs> uh, you do get a lot of love and support and a lot of uh, validation, even on emotional level. But there's also the flip side, which is the the trolls. My favorite. The bit. comments. <laughs> yeah, is this your? Is I this love your it. Bit? I live for sing, it now. Sing, it's one sing. of my favorite things. Do you take them on or do you ignore? I take them on. <laughs> and I love it. So initially, I've got to say, admi I admittedly, in the first year, maybe six months of, of doing the social media uh, and doing TikTok, I was getting like chefs hating on me and all this stuff. And, and it, it got to me. And therapy helped. It was the first time I ever went to therapy. Really? Uh, but yes, because I just, I was so scared to put any content out because it was like, I didn't realise, it felt so personal. When it's, just, when it's just one idiot sitting there in the pants. In the basically, pants. yes. And I couldn't quite separate. Because it is very personal. It's very personal. Yeah. So um, after, after a lot of therapy sessions and a lot of money spent on my mental health, um, no, no not, not too much, but it was, it was then when it kind of clicked to me, it's like, it's, you know what? It's just some boring, insecure nobody, who, random person, does not know one thing about me who just wants to chat. And so I chat back. I just, I thoroughly enjoy it. I don't take any of it personally now. I'm like, I'll give as good as I get. And I, 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 I it, it, it amuses me. That's like something fun to do now when I start seeing these things. And um, I, I do all the, the standard stuff. I'll call them out on their grammar. I'll call them out on their spelling. I'll just do their head in. Like I just try and annoy them as much as I can. Um, and do it from a place I never get personal um, because they do and that's when they've lost you know they can say anything to me and you can call me a fat whatever they can just do what, whatever they want to do they can say but all I do is just expose them for being just mean for no reason and they get all they get all sheepish and they get all like oh everyone's coming for me now it's like well you came for me so yeah. I don't advocate my followers going for them at all. Um, and I feel bad when it but gets to the do, uh, <laughs> <laughs> But if they do... No. It represents a certain level of, like, success on a, on a platform when, I've, when people start commenting as if you're not involved in that account. So someone, yeah. on a positive side, you often get comments saying when someone sort of mentions their, to their friend, oh, this guy's doing this, this is good. And it's like, yeah, I'm here, hi. Yeah. yeah. Um, but equally, similarly, I think that if, if you're... If there's a point at which people stop seeing the social media account as a human, human mm. being. Yeah. And then think that, you know, all bets are off and they can say weird things that you'd never say in the street to, yeah. to your face. That's, that's definitely one of them. It's, it's similar. That's why I, saw it, so I see it almost as like a, well, thank you very much, because you, like... <laughs> yes. You think you I'm doing something good. Cause yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. yeah. You time. get a rise. Yeah. But uh, it does get you know, it can get very, very personal and very, you know, is mm -hmm. you, is a real person just because it's, it's on the phone in, TD, in 2D. And, and exactly. you know, I think if you're a content creator, you, you don't have the sort of buffers that, you know, people have on, on newspapers, on TV. You don't have that sort of layer of protection. You're so exposed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's also, I I, sorry. Sorry. No, I think I, I love Poppy's, uh, you know, the way she handles it. Um, Do you experience that? Um, no. Sorry, I just, yeah. I, I am, I just stay in my bubble. Kind yeah. Of. I, yeah, I'm not, I, I respond to almost every comment that comes in, but it's mostly positive. But I've seen your responses and I think uh, other content creators need to learn because I think sometimes they get so personal. Like even the content creators get personal. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, come on. You know, you if you are going to be in this business, you have to learn how to deal with it, yeah. Yeah. or don't be the face of it, or don't read it. There has to be something you need to do because it's your choice to be here. And I'm not saying that people should be commenting such negative things. No, I'm saying you need to learn how to cope because that's not going to stop. Yeah, you have no control over that. But how you react is your 
uh, way of dealing it. Let someone else read the comments. Something, there needs to be something. And yeah. what you do is amazing the way she handles it. But obviously... It's hard not to read the comments though, because that was, you know, I would spend hours going through them and then be like, uh, and I took, I did take the step back. I would read the first few and be like, okay, I can use that. I'll use that for my own content. You're really just giving me fuel to yeah. just post more stuff. Um, and then I stop, you know, once it gets to a point, I stop reading it because yeah. it's, it, I don't need to know all of that, especially when it gets to, um, you know, when there's like threads. I mean, have you ever read Tattle? Have you ever been on Tattle? No. <gasps> Never oh, go no, on Tattle. No. Oh, sorry. Never. Never. Has anyone, what, has what anyone ever, <laughs> yeah, Tattle is ferocious. It's basically a website where people just slag people off. And is a website it for is that? Hell, it is absolutely. I thought hell. it was just like the internet. <laughs> no, this is like a specific. This is like Reddit for bitching. Sorry, I'm swearing. So no, no, it's good. It's good. Um, it's hor it's a horrible, horrible no. place. I've only had four comments so far, so I'm I'm I watch it being like, oh, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm just waiting for someone to. But really have those comments come from social media or TV stuff? Uh, it, anything really uh, it's it's a lot of it's just people being like oh yeah she's insufferable now we yeah. liked her in lockdown now she's insufferable I'm like okay cool I'll take that yeah. I will take that because yeah I'm gobby now and a little bit annoying so I understand but um <laughs> but some people have pages and pages and they go and I'm like who I'm now now I have the time I'm reading it but I'm not joining in do you know what I mean yeah it's a very strange for me it's really strange to want to go on line and destroy someone's character. I, do, yeah. I can't, I would never do it. I'd never think about commenting something nasty on someone's post. I'd, even if I thought it and thought, oh, I, I would just never do it. So I, it's like, where are these people finding the time to do this? How did you why? discover that? I'm still, sorry, I'm I still I love in everything shock. to do with. No, 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 how, we're how all doing even... between <laughs> no. midnight and two o'clock tonight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, where we will, we will all be. Yeah. It's... Wow, that is crazy. I, I read a lot of Reddit, so you find all these things yeah. out from there. But right? I, I do feel, and it's it's kind of like perverse to say, I, 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 I hear what you say. I would never post mm. anything nasty because why? Yeah. Uh, but I do think that people bring so much wonderful creative energy to their nasty comments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you so know poetic. what I mean? Sometimes, aren't they? Yeah, sometimes <laughs> you're like, this guy's sharp, you know? <laughs> That's why when, when... What was your favourite? What's your favourite? Favourite um, has got to be... Council uh, Estate Nigella was one of my favourite things. Yeah. Um, and then someone said... Oh, I can't remember. There's so many. I get through them all. And then someone recently said, um, middle class white woman shows us how to make mash or something. I was like, oh, the other week I got a cool council license. I'm just going... I'm going all through the classes now. I'm like... Yeah, okay. <laughs> just like... like just Beyond just yeah. like thrashing through the class barrier. Yeah, exactly. Ed, how about you? Favorite nasty comment? Uh, no. I know I get a bit. Of, I, 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 feel, I don't get many nasty comments probably because I'm not at a level where enough people think that they just want to comment all the time. But I'll, I'll post. I actually, I actually. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I was actually thinking on, on the nasty. <laughs> I was. Well, I think uh, you mentioned about sort of the comments, the good, the bad, and the ugly, um, and what that brought to mind to me was. A bit like Pop is you know, responding as a person to people that don't think you're a person. Mm. Um, my favourite all-time Instagram response was when someone asked Nigel Slater for... Oh, my God! Uh, ...recommendations of <laughs> travelling to Japan. And he, and he wrote back, um, being, excuse my French, I'm not a fucking travel agent, Karen. <laughs> It's just like, everyone, Nigel, just, what has happened? So I think it's that, at that point when you break down the barrier from being... An account Super, of a famous yeah. person or someone who's grown on social media, and then occasionally they are personal responses. No, too. but you know, I rem I can I can never forget that either because actually the person, the follower asked Niger, uh, asked him, can you please make a list of all the places to go and see and stay, something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which, Not like just say, oh, is there any like. Suggestion? Which actually comes the the actual annoying comment for us as uh, for people working in food. Is when someone just writes recipe question mark. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, well, yeah. If I haven't given it, then you know maybe there's a reason. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> yeah, but like... also you are you are saying you're not given the recipe. That's why they're asking you the recipe. I've posted stuff all oh, the time. So it yeah. says where the recipe is, whether it's in a magazine yeah. or it's in the link. <laughs> the number of times people ask for 
can you please share the recipe? If you just read the thing, I sometimes get annoyed and say, it's in the description, question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> yeah. You know, just. Oh, do you know what, what really, I, what I never get around in my head is like, you know, when, you, when you, you'd post someone and someone said, oh yeah, that looks really nice. I make something very similar, oh, yeah. but instead of <laughs> instead chicken, of lamb, I'm you using <laughs> aubergine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> instead of uh, coriander, I'm using some <laughs> garbage from my kitchen floor. Uh, <laughs> Instead of walnuts, I'm just like flicking bogies. It's delicious. And you're like, what, 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 what's the interaction here? Like, what is the yeah. premise? Oh, love that. Yeah. This happens so right. much that you'd it say like, I don't get, I don't understand this conversation. Like, I don't understand it. Yeah, yeah but yeah. The, the thing is that they, then they ask you for a recipe, pure chicken recipe. What's the replacement for chicken? Things like that. It's yeah. a cauliflower roast. What's the replacement for cauliflower? Obviously, just choose a different yeah. recipe. Yeah. That's the, that's the... Everything has gluten. Yeah, but <laughs> seriously. <laughs> just you cannot something. make it without gluten. No, yours don't have gluten. No gluten. No yeah. Gluten. Um, my questions. <laughs> amongst, talk amongst yourselves for a minute. No, I just, I liked your little, yeah, this, that's made me laugh, that has. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is there a replacement for potatoes? Oh, you might have come to the wrong channel there, yeah, sweetie. Just, <laughs> yeah, and can I just put this instead of this? Yes, but that's going to completely change <laughs> the recipe. Yeah. So just I love that that's the harshest comments that you get, is that, can I replace this? <laughs> Honestly, Chedna's world yeah. is a very it's a beautiful world, isn't it? curry-scented like yeah. bubble, mm. I, I, which I, we're I'll sometimes allowed. That's what I'm going to do. Sometimes we're allowed to worship book. at. Very <laughs> sensitive. <laughs> In the best possible way. Uh, okay. No one is better equipped to predict the next big thing than the people on this stage. I think so. <laughs> okay. Otherwise, what are you doing here? I don't know. What are I we don't doing? <laughs> uh, yes. What's coming our way? What's the big tsunami? Do you mean tre do you mean like a trend? Trends, or yeah, I didn't want to say it. No, so trend, not like trend, not a platform. Trends or platform? I'll take either right. one. What's the next trend and what's the next platform? Here's a question, nicely phrased. Discuss. Uh, I, 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 you can't predict the trends, and if anyone says, "Oh, what should I be doing?" on Instagram, on TikTok, to make my account fly, yeah. which trends are best. If, if you're having to ask that question, you're not going to be the person that, that makes that happen. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, wow. That's <laughs> no, I love that. That yeah. is so deep. But I think, I think that it's quite interesting, these spaces, because the trends happen. Someone must start the trend, and Instagram must blow it up, or I don't know how it happens. But then you get a month or two of people essentially just repeating and copying, which is, that's not creation, that's... You're doing the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I don't know. Trend, I don't, I'm not very interested in trends, but on platforms, I think that um, I think they're all diver they're all trying to become a, a media channel. Is that the right way? And then you have lots of verticals. Is that how you used to say <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, media yeah. yeah. Broadcasting. So I, th I think today Meta announced that they're doing a text-based version of Instagram. They're about to start. Essentially, Twitter. Elon Musk is ruining Twitter. Yeah. So there's lots of people that act, people that don't work in visuals that probably want to have a a, a, a text-based social media thing to continue. So Meta have announced that they're going to do that, and I think that in the same way that Isn't Substack, there a Donald Trump one. Yeah, but I don't think he's going to grow to you know take no. over the world. No. Thankfully, um, he. But I th I think that you talked about community, and we talked about having a portfolio of things and being a media platform is that I think really what we're going to look at is whether it's meta allowing you to do more than just the video content um, to sell wares directly, to do all this stuff, which it kind of does. The Substack has the sort of started off as a newsletter channel, but they're basically trying to get every single thing into that so that they've got a, a comments Twitter style thing. They'll have Instagram style stuff. It's so everyone, all these content creators, <laughs> essentially becoming their own version of the BBC website. Yeah. With Five different channels of things to have, and it's it's that's that's the growth. I think Does that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. We didn't talk about sell. We didn't talk about Twitter at all because that's kind of. I just assumed that someone but just the, like put it in the corner. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that, and, I, and, I and that's I think put it in the naughty step to think about what it's done. You know what you did, Twitter. But what some I mean, Substack will tell you that you know you, you've got to leave Instagram because 
uh, whatever's happening to Twitter will happen to that, and then TikTok, you could, sorry, amass four million followers, and then next week it's been told that we're out, you know, it's like, so what's, so you've got to hold your own community yeah. and give, you know, create, have some sort of ownership of what you're doing, and some social media platforms will tell you that that's what they're offering you. Mm. But I think the thing is that I, I think uh, what I see from my end is every platform is trying to be the other platform. So TikTok is trying to be YouTube, YouTube is trying to be TikTok with shorts, Instagram is doing longer reels now. So every platform wants to copy what the other platform is doing. And I think it, it's just like a big jumble of everybody. There's no clarity now that Instagram is just this, re, you know, TikTok is just this, there, it's just a big, it's quite messy. Yeah, yeah, it is it's messy. It's just messy. Yeah. Like, what's wrong with YouTube to ha start shots just because it wants to be like TikTok? Yeah. You know, just stick with what no, you're but good at. Yeah, but it, this is what we do. We just want to grow. Yeah. Yeah. Poppy, what's your, where's your nose there? Um, thing? I think that it's been a trend for a while, I suppose. I don't know if it's really a trend, but more people are looking at expert influencers or expert content creators. So, um, people who have more of an expertise in that one piece of content that they're making out so if it's a chef who's you know all the all the tv chefs are now on tiktok and instagram and, yeah. and doing using that as another platform rather than just doing the old media like books and and yeah. stuff so uh, expert influencers are really in their own now you can go onto tiktok and search even like uh, office managers you know and and you'll have someone with millions of followers who's an office manager and that's their expert field and people love it they love seeing insight into people's jobs and lives yeah. and being an expert in it um like gardeners all this sort of stuff so that's definitely on trend probably done now but that's yeah. th that was what was more recently um and i think that we went straight into uh, short form media with TikTok, so 60 seconds max, um, and now you're seeing a change into longer form media. Um, so YouTube's kind of really come back into its own. It had a bit of a blip, I think, anyway, yeah. for a few years, of, and now it's huge again. Um, and It's also like the one social media that's not totally evil. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's always just stayed quite... Quite, Quite seems nice there, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, benign. Seems like a nice little place to be, which I'm going to try. Um, and I think there is a movement of um, people on new media being... W w social media is not going to go away, mm. um, and it's always going to get used. So it's... People, so like myself, trying to do TV stuff, so doing like Young Master Chef and everything. There's a big focus on how I can use my platforms for that. So there's going to be. Uh, basically, I'm getting used, but I love it because I'm I'm also yeah, getting right. something in return, sort no, of thing. So it's you know it's a two-way, it's yeah. transactional. So that's going to be more of a thing, I believe. I think more people who are going to be because we're always going to have to have new people on TV, yeah. uh, in books and everything like that. They're going to be more inclined to have a, a, a big social media presence, I think. I think that's already a thing, but yeah. like it's it's getting used by the people who are also on... Do you think the trend is that corporations are using social media better by yes, using by individuals using people, rather than yeah. saying, hi, we're yeah. MasterChef, this is... That's, yeah, yeah, exactly. There's outreach to individuals rather than using their own platform to promote their own stuff. That's super interesting. Uh, another thing that's been on my mind a lot recently, I dream to be replaced by a chatbot. This is my ambition in life. You want to be Nigella, <laughs> I, I want to be uh, replaced by AI. Yeah. And this is coming in a big way to the social media and starting to sort of reach our shores of... of yeah, you can write a recipe. You can literally just put in a chicken recipe yeah. and it will write a recipe for you. That's yeah. terrifying in my mind. Absolutely terrifying. Don't you find it so joyous? <laughs> I'll just stay in bed. Write me a recipe in the style of yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just throw the thingy on it. Um, no, but do you see, how do you see it changing the landscape? I mean, I think it, it's going to be, there's going to be so much sort of content flooding all the yeah. channels. Will they even be relevant? Will we be relevant? What's... How do you envisage that? It's a biggie. Yeah. I'm sorry to be no, dropping this on you. This might be the yeah. beginning of the end. The I end. think, yeah, I think. It's just, it's just too much. I can't take it. I'm yeah, tired. Sorry. <laughs> you <Let's> go in. <laughs> 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 
Uh, see you guys. Leave it. Um, how, do, how do you do? You, do you see the landscape changing? There, there will be a change, yes, because anyone will be able to make anything on any platform, um, which is fine. Go, go for it. I think the only thing that's going to set people apart is. Um, <laughs> human, <laughs> human interaction, um, personality, authenticity, and that might be the only way that I mean this. It could all they could all stop doing it soon. Yeah. I don't. We don't know. I really don't know. But it does seem like a weird. I think like, you, you touched on the point there that, and the, the way that people sometimes say, you generate success or achieve or, or quality on, on social media is or no how you, how you gain traction, is um, people come for the initial content and they stay for the the personality you know yeah. because after seeing five things that you've made really great whether it's amazing whether the film's amazing the film's amazing after a while it becomes pretty boring unless you've got something you know which is why we all put our faces in there now all these yeah. sort of things that's why um it's why your restaurant account is much better than someone else's because you're it's still very personal um so surely you, with, with ai we paid him a lot of money yeah, <laughs> yeah paid him bitter um but the the um with ai the um hopefully for at least the short to medium term there's going to be it's just not a human there's not an emotional yeah. response to that and i think the reason why brand accounts fail is because there's no emotion there's no human mm -hmm. connection so hopefully for a little bit longer we can outdo yeah. that AI. and that's why it's worth you know putting your face on things because mm -hmm. you're yeah because this is this is kind of like what it really is about it's about people connecting you know it's about our sort of the big communion this is how we come together at a sort of you know virtual table you know and, and meet each other it's it's yeah i'm i'm very curious to see uh, how that landscape is going to be even probably this time next year I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah do we still do we still have time yes we have time listen Top tips, success in social media. Now that we've covered everything, we know what success is, we know what's the business model. Top tips, you cannot say just be yourself, even though that's what we just said. <laughs> so I will start by yeah. saying, sure. choose your medium. Yes. I think don't go on everything is my advice. Yeah. Just start with one thing, try things and see what you like, and then just go for it. Don't think, oh, I'm going to do YouTube um, and then do TikTok, though I'm on Instagram and on Chetna, YouTube. Chetna, is this a different way of saying just be yourself? No, no, no. Okay. No, I'm saying um, <laughs> don't uh, be an octopus. Be, yeah. uh, I don't know what I was trying to say. But oh. basically, don't branch out. Just be focused on one thing. This is what you're saying, just be yourself. No, it's don't not be being yourself. yourself. People. You no, your it's got nothing to do with yourself. You, you could <laughs> talk about shoes. No, no, in, no, I hear, I just, hear what you're saying. Just choose I one platform. What you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Poppy? Uh, I'm going to go opposite completely. Uh, <laughs> no, it's really good. Um, yeah, I, I think um, that you need to be realistic in what it is that you're going to be doing. So if you're choosing, I, I chose a certain thing and I ran with it. That was, you know, I saw that there was going to be popularity in it. It was the first video that got a million views or whatever. So that was like, right, that's what people want to see. I'm going to do that first. That's, you know, that's potatoes. I'm going to do 25 days. You know, it's find a niche. A niche is going to bring you a community. A community is your USP. Uh, US, USP, USP. Yeah, USP. Um, and then you can branch out after that, I think. So it's, it's stick to one. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Once you've grown Once and reached a, a level, point, you then you can And spread. also, this sounds terrible, but it's one bit of advice that I give to myself is that not everyone's going to like you. Like... It's, it may not work how you expect it to work. You may not, you know, I never had an ambition of getting this far. So now I've got an ambition of Nigella, which is very far. Um, it, that might never happen. So don't get downbeat by, it, well, I'm, yeah, I'm forcing 100%. it. I'm manifesting. Um, but it might never happen. So you can't get, if that one niche doesn't work, try something else. No one's going to care in a few days whether you do something different. Um, and it's just be consistent with that. Then, when you get to a point, <laughs> I say, lots of fingers in lots of pies. Uh, I would go, I, I, I'm trying to do everything, purely because there's so many people that you can reach, and especially if you're going for a business plan of taking over. <laughs> the universe. The universe, yeah. yeah. That's how you can do it. 
Okay. But I think you've got. I think you've got to do as much as you can if that's something you're set on and you have the time and the patience to do it. So, so you lure them in with the potatoes. Lure them in, and now I've got them, and now I can do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ed, yours? Uh, I wrote five things down. Um, yeah. Uh, be good at what you do. Yeah. But that can be. That might mean that you make beautiful content, whether it's an image or a video, but mm -hmm. also it might be that you are good at what you do, whether that's talking to camera or, or cooking, cooking food. Um, yeah. Maybe easier said than done. But um, you, you, have, you need to have a USP and a focus. Um, uh, I've spent 10 years not having a USP and a focus, mm -hmm. apart from occasionally. Uh, I did a book about size. I'm doing a lot of stuff about eggs. And those are the times that people, you do potatoes. Thomas Straker did butter. Like, yeah. that, there's a reason why things happen because people you become known for something mm -hmm. yeah but then um, isn't that i mean potatoes are going to run out potatoes are never going to run out no no i mean you not run out but but you'd, so, you'd want to do something else yeah that's that's why you branch because yeah. then you can so to be, this is be like to, to, to become mm -hmm. something people need to know is you there's the potato yeah right um but then after that you need to have a personality be yourself um, <laughs> but also put yourself don't in useless. Yourself, people. Don't Pe yourself. people don't people don't <laughs> stay unless they like you uh, then they're not going to hang around um, and then to that point you have to build a community like like mm -hmm. Chetna um, why is delicious Yella so successful because she built a massive community of people that love Ella's stuff and so success being success on social media where everything gets engagement but then that transferred to her for massive book sales you know that's that's because yeah. pinch of nom biggest selling cookbook for years yeah. mm -hmm. because they've got a Facebook community of people. So if that's, what, if that's what success is, then you need to engage with them. You need to sometimes be nice on the comments as well. Um, <laughs> Occasionally. <laughs> um, and then the last thing is um, you've got to play the game, which is what I reckon I do lots of the other things and I don't play the Instagram game particularly well. Um, the game for Instagram at the moment is uh, doing things as a series because they want to make you... Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a way of them constantly generating new content and becoming known as the butter guy. Um, but that's helpful. Um, you, you need to create a network online of people that support you, which means you're sharing their content and they're sharing your content because you can shout in a room for as loud as possible. But if people aren't opening the doors and telling everyone about it, it's not going to work. So I think things like Mob do incredibly well because the people within it grow it together it's, mm -hmm. it's an organic thing in which people support each other so it's helpful you can't you just can't grow without other people sharing you um and then trends uh which is like i find it very difficult to jump on board music trends or or um i think at the moment there's quite a lot of things when i'm doom scrolling i see lots of Q, like very short easy content q and a's where it's, it's impossible to not watch someone say what's your favorite restaurant in london what's your favorite burger with this that and the other and you get to the end of one minute and you've that's a complete waste of my life <laughs> but i've watched one minute of it and then you accidentally the algorithm then the algorithm feeds you someone else doing exactly yeah. the yes same but thing. i've got to uh, i kind but that's of just, i don't want to do it that's a trend no but the trend stuff is depends on uh, what you want to achieve at the end of Correct, it yeah. because if you can go on trends you can become the most popular video again how many of them will come back to you for a recipe? And I think you really don't want to burn yourself out, which is really important. The mental health is, it is key. You, like you need to, to know it. when to draw the line, which is the biggest problem on social media right now. What? What? You can get carried away. I'm con what, what trends are you guys talking about? Because I've never seen a trend where I've gone, oh, that's hard. Oh, I, I've, I've done that. Well, hard, what do you mean hard? Or like, that, that's going to be too, because if it's, for instance, like put in a certain, there was one trend that was like, oh, people say I need to have my video seven seconds, so this is, and then it stops. I just repurpose oh. everything. I only ever repurpose stuff for trends. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, this but that's why, you, that's why you got four million followers, because you're not- You were following trends. You're much better at, at, at uh, feeding the beast, right? Um, yeah, okay, so that's what I just, it's not- It's not hard. It's, it's not, diff it's, yeah. it doesn't have to be difficult. It can be done in your own way, and it can be done as simply as you want it to be. Yeah. Um, I think when it comes to, I mean, when that feta pasta trend happened, yeah. I just threw feta in with some potatoes. You know, I made it completely to how, what, what my yeah. is, my, my, 
aesthetic is, I suppose. So I'm with you. I think that is how you you do really well. Yeah, that's. I just I don't want to scare anyone from not doing them because they can be a very quick and easy way yeah. to gain traction if you use them. Literally, you spin it to everything that you're doing. It's basically manipulating social media to, it, yeah. which is which playing the game. It is yeah. literally playing. The yeah, game. but you see that I I know that, and I I see because I follow that creator's uh, Instagram account. They'll say, "Oh, these are the music things which are." But I want to put some. I don't want like that music, and I like the my cake or the curry on on that music. So I don't care if it's. Tri I think you. At the end of it, you have to enjoy it. Why are you doing it? You have to be yeah. yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I tried. <laughs> I tried. Be yourselves, whatever, I don't care. <laughs> you be yourself, you be yourself. Um, question. You guys, you're going to be yourself. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've covered everything, but if you have a, a random question, then let's do it. Don't you feel like we've sorted everything? <laughs> Clearly not. Okay, let's bring it. Bring the pain. Bring the joy. Oh, there's a mic. There's, the mic. Oh, yeah. there's a roving mic. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I should have been like this is the, the bit that you ask questions. Like we've moved to that. So lucky for you, I actually wrote down my question because I'll think of something and forget it <laughs> immediately as I get the mic. Um, this was touched on a little bit, but how much do we think that traditional food media um, influenced social media? So like I grew up with Food Network and Guy Fieri and like being Moroccan and seeing honestly terrible recipes that were just like raisins thrown into something being called Moroccan versus now I can see an actual Moroccan influencer doing food that's like nostalgic to me and reminds me of my mom and my grandma. So how do you think that plays into the landscape now? Super interesting. I think it's, it's possibly more in the reverse that I think that the, the amount of good stuff that you can get on social media should surely be making traditional media better. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it isn't always, but it, whether it's the style in which it's being filmed or the content and, the, and the, maybe the, um, yeah, the use of, people authentic to a cuisine to present it rather than being translated to the voice of a white man <laughs> is is probably helped by the success of social media but also i think uh, what has helped uh, what i from where i see it i think uh, social media is not everyone in london only anymore mm. it's the whole world so you could be like the people i follow i'm following indian uh, chefs i'm following people in america or all over the world and that's where you get authentic stuff whereas food network for example would just be like white guy taking to India and talking about food. So you're never going to get the real deal, yeah. honestly speaking. Whereas now, all those barriers have gone and you can get actually people, like there's an account which definitely, if you're already not following, Village Cooking, it's called on Instagram. Yeah, that's fantastic. And this yeah. guy goes into Indian villages and he, actually grandmas are cooking, you know, 90, 100 year old grandmas are cooking and it, it cannot be, it's not made up. You know, it's the real deal. So I think that is why, because it's not restricted to one place anymore. Yeah, it's a good one. I didn't, nobody asked me about my tip for the success of social media. Oh, no. Media. And <laughs> that's, <laughs> my tip is this, get a grandma. Grandmas <laughs> and social media yeah. are like. W with a cat. The catnip. Oh, yeah, cats, oh, cats, grandmas, slather your grandma with food. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> questions, questions. I don't know how to choose. You. <laughs> don't talk. Choose one. <laughs> we're going to get to everyone. Oh, now we're going to talk Do at the you, same uh, time. Oh. Oh. Sorry. Oh. 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 You go ahead and then I'll go after you. Oh, ah. oh, thanks. Okay. Um, Do you ever feel like your status as a chef is affected by, or like how other chefs see you is affected by how you present yourself on social media? Do you feel like you're looked down on by the chef community, by kind of playing the game of social media? So yes. <laughs> yeah, actually, this question is just for her because I'm not a chef um, yet, so. No, I, I think there's been a definitely a bad rep for TikTok chefs or social media chefs. Um, and I have even been part of that when I was at work. You know, we like people would scroll through someone's Instagram, maybe someone who'd left like the job and be like, oh my God, how embarrassing that he's putting this up. And we'd be like, ah, yeah. Um, <laughs> 
but that is what changes, you know, and now it's been so huge for so many chefs and so many people that a lot of chefs are now having to retract all of the previous statements and be like, actually, this is, this, this is the way forward. You know, this is how to, first of all, promote your restaurant, if you have a restaurant, how to promote your work and a portfolio, even if you want to get a job as another, in a different place. Like, you can literally show people, like, yeah, this is what I do, this is my work, I love this. Yeah. Um, so it can be used in so many more positive ways, but initially... I, like, I still think a lot of people who I've worked with or, or who know me in the chef community probably are like, oh, God, that's embarrassing. Like, but There's always jealous and spiteful people. Don't I? I think exactly. the, the, the other thing as well is that I think I, I sort of done some chefing, done a lot of writing and, and sit in the middle. And um, uh, sometimes I know chefs that I think, think it's all valid and other people don't think it yeah. is. And I think it always comes down to... It's a bit like people saying, oh, I went to Jamie Oliver's restaurant. He wasn't there and it was rubbish. Yeah. Well, Jamie's an incredible presenter and broadcaster. And, and it, you, you can't tell everyone what to think, but mm. Hob is A, a good chef and B, incredible on social media. And people, if they can't click that it's a different thing, then yeah. you can't educate everyone. Yeah, it's, um, but I think, it's, I think people are but starting yeah, to see a change. Yeah. I also think, you know, yeah, everyone has a, an account. Yeah. Like, everyone's on some sort of social it's kind of like your business card it is yeah it, it is now yeah so i don't i don't think it's like yeah maybe you fool around and you look silly but you know probably you are silly in your life uh, <laughs> but it, it's kind of like this is the shop front become normalized yeah yeah this is the world. it is our portfolio yeah it is literally but i saw something on tiktok this morning um on the train now you're always I on know, tiktok i know i know i thought i had to pass my time on the train and actually that said some, you know, uh, Ghani, like, um, uh, knowledgeable guy on, was saying, if somebody doesn't like you, it's, you know, it's their problem, it's not your problem. If somebody thinks bad of you, it is not your problem. So I think if you are going on social media, go with that thought. Unless you've unfollowed them previously, yeah. and, then, and then it's your problem. <laughs> <laughs> and you have, a, you have the microphone already, my dear. I know, so I'm going to ask a question. <laughs> um, I have a question for Chetna, and it was when you were sp uh, saying earlier about um, young people with sort of exploded followers picking things up from, like, who knows where, but you didn't think that it was really had any staying power any credibility and i just want i don't want you to slag anybody off but or name names but just could you give some examples of what you mean by that i, yeah, I, I do you want know, you to I, slag I, people I, off I, let's I, get some traction yeah. <laughs> she's not a slagger offer no we i'm not no, that's no, nice. that's very to lovely some, drop the trying to get Come some dirt here but you <laughs> can <laughs> slag somebody <laughs> off Itamar, but we'll Sorry? let chetna be nice you can slag somebody <laughs> off we'll let, we'll, we'll let chetna be nice Chetna, you, you, you be nice. Okay, I will. No, I think what is, I'm not saying that they are not here to stay. I think they might be here to stay. My problem is that people like those should take the responsibility of telling where they got the inspiration from. Mm -hmm. Whenever I cook from somebody's book, I will mm. not post it without saying it is from somebody's book. Even if it's an Indian book, I will name the chef's name. On YouTube, I'll show the picture of the book and put a link in, in the uh, description. Uh, like, you have some responsibilities. Yeah. All these youngsters are doing all this food. And you might say I'm jealous that their you know, numbers are going. I don't care. I just want them to um, tell us where they're getting their information from. Clearly, their mom's not teaching them because, you know, they are not from Indian background if they're doing Indian food. Or they're not Italian if they're doing Italian food. So clearly, their family is not giving them recipes. And clearly, they're getting it from social media. So do they not have the responsibility of telling where they're getting it from? Just say it's inspired by so-and-so. But, you know, I just find that is extremely wrong. I, d I know exactly what you mean. It's when it, it, it's... You always want to um, be able to... People want to put recipes out there, whether they're their own or not, or whatever. That's, that's a lovely thing to do, and it's showing people they can cook. And it's they normally have very great skills in cooking, but it is about... Um, being able to identify where it's come from. Um, because you see a lot of uh, recipes on social media and you go, oh, wh wh where's that? Wh where has, they haven't made yeah. that up. It hasn't come out of thin air. Um, so especially if there's no kind of like, I know it sounds horrible, like restaurant background or any, or, you know, where, where, where has it exactly. come from? Exactly. So it's just being able to identify, you know, I know what you mean. Yeah. I, I would say this is inspired by a recipe I had on holiday or, yeah. you know, it could be anything, it, but it's, 
people give themselves the credibility when it doesn't necessarily it isn't necessarily theirs. Yeah, but also I think the, the problem is the audience because nobody's questioning any of it. You know, it's such a, such a fake world, which is, it is true, sorry, it is true. No, I mean, yeah, I, I, I kind of like you're shaming me here because I, I, oh, no. I have a little confession to Poppy that I did use your, one of your recipe without credits. Oh my God, I love that, <laughs> no, I take it. <laughs> now that you're saying it, I'm just like, shit. I did the, I did like an online uh, class. Yeah. And I did your Hasselback potatoes oh. with bacon and honey. Oh, that's good. Which is... That, but that's the thing. That's like... I feel, I feel like bacon and honey it's is out there. It's thing. on the internet. I can use it. I don't need to give credit. No, actually, I would normally give credit, but no. I actually stole another recipe from someone else and I gave it. Ah. And I didn't want to come out like no, I only no, steal no, recipes. I think it's, I think it's, it's very different. <laughs> it's very different when it's, when it's a potato with bacon and honey, which anybody... That could literally be anybody. So good. It's when it's, when it's a... I think more of a, an authentic or a specific cultural recipe as well. It yeah. makes it even more like, wh where, where's that? I did around the world in 80 potatoes. I tried I try to do around the world, no potatoes. It was very hard and I stopped about two days in. But it was always, you know, because I, I wanted to explore different cultures and yeah. food, different flavours. And I didn't want to just start putting recipes from Lebanon out. There because I've never been, I don't know anyone, but I want it to be like, oh, I've researched, I've had a look, I'm trying their potato recipe, which is is, is more of what we mean. But I mean, take the, take the, no, my, my you take that Hasselback is, recipe. I, I think <laughs> if it's there, it's yours. Like if you see it, use it. I think it sort of yeah. comes to the same. That's, that's you know, likewise to my shit. Like if you see it, it's yours. But, we but, put these things out there, you know, this is. Yeah, but I think the point is, um, Another another pet hate I have is someone introducing a reel as "Hi guys, uh, this is my recipe yeah. <laughs> for spaghetti bolognese." And you're just like, come on, this just there's a lazy way of presenting it, and that's lazy to not give it. A it is lazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah but uh, uh, you know. Or the only the way around it is go. This is inspired by. And That's what be, I'm yeah. saying. And it can be from by. it can be from a, it's far from a country. My holiday that I went on that I tried it, or, or my someone, friend. or my friend, or a book, or and that's that's literally. <laughs> this is inspired by me going online <laughs> finding recipes. That even that even that's that better, that's better than. <laughs> Even that's better. This is inspired by a copy and paste job that I've just done. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been there. You yeah, know, the yeah. funny bit was on Twitter only today, this morning, I saw something. Only oh, cover you see on TikTok this morning. No, 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 I know, I know. Just do one thing. <laughs> Shut <laughs> up. No, as a, as, a, as, a class, as a customer, I was on Twitter, not as a. Uh, yeah, anyway, yeah. you get it. Yeah. So I wasn't posting and I read somebody thanking Nigella uh, for this recipe of dipping asparagus in boiled egg. I literally thought. <laughs> I didn't know it was Nigella's recipe. I've been doing it. Nobody <laughs> told me it was Nigella's recipe to dip. Come on, Chesna, it's all Nigella's recipe. Everything. Yeah. Is Nigella. Eggs? <laughs> Always like that. Basically, I'm, I'm, all the recipes are Nigella, and whatever you eat, it's a good practice to thank Nigella. Yeah. Just, in case, <laughs> just in case, cover your bases. Thank you, Nigella. <laughs> what, what's, gonna, what's the worst that can happen? You have. You have nailed it, yeah. Yeah, just yeah, thank yeah. Nigella. Yeah. She deserved it. She yeah, went yeah, for she, it. She yeah. did, she did. In in like fifty years, they'll be like, thank Poppy. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, more questions, my loves. Yes, a lovely question here. I don't know. The guys do whatever they want. I have zero control. <laughs> um, yes, my dear. Hi. Thank you all so much. I'm really glad that in these questions we've kind of got more to the crux of the content, which is food, and something that makes food content so compelling is the fact that we need it to live and you guys are making that more exciting and inspiring. Um, but I also wanted to ask a little bit about like the work-life balance between your job being to create content out of like the meals that you eat every day and like whether you sometimes have issues with separating life from work and putting aside your camera while you eat or cook. And yeah, what's the work-life balance like? Basically? I mean, first, health warning, I just need to say, you know you can't eat the food that you did before you took a picture. It's very bad. <laughs> <laughs> Digestion. So please don't yeah. do it and don't try. You don't need to post it, but you have to take a picture, as otherwise it's really yeah, damaging. it's really bad for you. I just want it out there so you know. <laughs> uh, but it's a very good question. Where do you draw the line? Do you just have some, oh. sometimes you just like me, 
I'm going to have chips now and it's not content, it's just food. But we are not documenting every day's food kind of, uh, may, we, I might put it on stories, but it's not like I'm filming every, I write cookbooks too, so I, I can't film the cookbook recipe. So um, like I said yesterday, I filmed the cake I made and tomorrow I'm going to be testing some recipes for uh, like a magazine. So it, 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 it doesn't have to be kind of, um, th th oh God. Okay, so you have to know what is your pri what your priorities are, where what you want from that work, and if you can just plan a little bit in advance. I don't plan that much, but I know that tomorrow I'm doing that, and day after I am going to cook something with my mom. I know that, and that's what we're going to eat. But I think um, your end goal is quite important. What do you want to achieve? Do you want to focus on just putting out recipe videos? Then you kind of can get a bit carried away. So you have to, isn't it? I found that in a way that the the, re, the videoing, the, the, the moving imageification of uh, social media has made my uh, habit of taking a picture of everything, every single thing I eat has reduced that because okay. it takes a lot longer for me to make a film. And so uh, my son and my wife are not going to be waiting for it. So it's very much that's a job in the same way as half of my recipe testing outside of social media is is just not for our family meal um so there's a separation now almost so it's a bit healthier than i think what you're saying is step away can't you enjoy the food rather than just photograph it and tell everyone about it and i think that i feel like that moment's almost moved on and whilst also everyone takes pictures of their food all the time now um which is weird but, yeah. um, but you also, you know, we eat with our eyes as well. So it's almost like a appreciation. What we're all going to do with these thousands of photos that are on our phones. <laughs> Delete them after you shared. You? Or, yeah, God, yes. Otherwise, you have a mural in my uh, uh, every part, part, single photo. I use the photos <laughs> as a record of what I've cooked where if it, as for inspiration for something else or as a you know, reminder of what I, what I did. So when I so do you not like find trying to go through the pictures of your phone too much for your mouth? Like, if I haven't deleted my last video's clips, I, I'll go mad, like... I think you're more organized than I am. Yeah, yeah that's, that's very definitely can, which we don't know how, because you're always on social media. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you find the time to... <laughs> on the train, just deleting pictures. I am, um, I have personally tried to separate it more, because I was very much in a cycle of uh, record... Everything's an opportunity for content, so it was very much like, dinner would take five hours to get uh, sorted because I'd be moving cameras and lights and all that sort of stuff. Whereas uh, I've, because I was doing it all at home and it became very like constricted and then the kitchen would be a mess and I'd be like, ah, this is hell being here. So I've been really lucky to be able to like, I'm building a little kitchen studio for myself so then I can actually separate it and I go to, I'll go to work three times a week and that'll be my content making days. And it's just going to, uh, that that's how I'm breaking it up for myself. Um, and then when I'm when I know I'm not going to be able to do content at home and actually make recipe videos, uh, if we're traveling, if I'm having to travel for work or do something, that's when I have started doing like a little series of finding the world's best potato. I'm sticking to my niche, but I'm trying to just use that time as content. So you know, I will actively go and wherever I am, I was in like Rotterdam, go to the food market, try and find the best chips. But you know, that that's how I then it doesn't take up so much of my life, but it means that I'm still staying relevant in some way. So it's helpful as well that like literally everything I think about is food. So yeah. it doesn't always feel like there needs to be a separation. But yeah. Yeah, and you enjoy doing it. So yeah. yeah. So always take pictures, guys. Um, I am currently armed people? with a mic. Yeah. Oh, so I, I might go if that's okay. Where yeah. are you? Um, oh, hello. <laughs> um, Ed has really helpfully just given me a nice segue into my question, Thanks. which was about you mentioned the like videoification of seemingly all social media. Instagram was primarily a photo app, and now it's very much a video app, and we're all armed with a smartphone, so we're all a food photographer in some sense. Where do you guys see the place for more traditional food photography in the sense that it's like a styled image, the kind of things that we would see in magazines and cookbooks that 
I guess are more professionally put together than what we might just be able to do by snapping a picture on our phone. Where where is the place for that as as social media continues to evolve? Well, hopefully cookbooks. I mean, it, it does. It's interesting whenever I put a really good photo up, it doesn't do very well at all. People like a top shot of a of a plate with you know no kind of real artistic creativity on it. Um, but in a way that everyone can always predict the death of something, can't they? But um, I, f I think cookbooks people enjoy because they're physical objects um, and hopefully that'll continue. Um, I've seen quite a few things around Christmas, no, Easter time of AI generator, uh, generated images. Someone did a, um, he asked chat GBT to, uh, you know, do me a, a food show to, a, like essentially a magazine style uh, food shoot of an Easter Easter cake setup, and it was not dissimilar. <laughs> the result within a couple of minutes was not dissimilar to something you might see in a food magazine, and that's kind of interesting to me. And I, but I think would also mean that you're going to get an increase of traditionalists that want to see real quality and real food taken in a good site. Where yeah. where you then consume that beyond the book, I don't know. I, I, I think websites, uh, websites will be where you can get that. If you look at people like uh, Jane Dern and James Patisserie, her, she does the, you know, when she makes her cakes and everything, she does proper food styling for her website, but it's not always what you see on her uh, social media platform. So I think that's a really good way of utilizing that professional photography, which I would love to do. But again, if I ever put like a nice picture out, it's never, it's never um, welcomed as much on my social media. Do you think so that's a matter of context that I think people don't maybe, expect it? Yeah, context and also habit as well. Though people, yeah. you know, yeah. you, people are used to stopping at certain things, and if it seems too professional, sometimes people move on. I think that that is definitely it. Is people it don't like too professional. But it's also it's such a more. speedy thing, isn't it? That the reason why a website might work or a book is that, and hopefully people will stick with it. Is um, it takes more time to consume something of quality than than we give it on social media with all the clutter. Yeah. yeah. Super interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Although, actually, quickly, you can get... There are some... Sorry, I was just thinking. There are some Insta pages that are, like, more dedicated to that professional, like, food yeah. photography, which then can be people's, like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll actually look through that whole page rather yeah, than just scrolling. To it. Yeah. So that. Hi. <laughs> I'm here. Hello. Ah, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so there's been a bit of writing at the moment about how recipes, even though they're prescriptive by nature, are actually this kind of like ephemeral thing you can't really grasp because every cook will interpret that recipe differently even if they follow it to the letter, depending on the temperature of their kitchen, depending on the time of year, whatever, depending on what they have in the fridge or the supermarket that they went to. How do you think sharing recipes online has changed what a recipe is? Wow, that is, <laughs> that is an um, intense question. Okay, the recipe is, is, a, is a conduit. The recipe is not the thing itself. The recipe is how I pass this idea to you, and you can recreate this idea at home. Uh, like you said, it's it's a very sort of the recipe begin. The recipe begins where the cooking ends. Where the cooking is done, then the recipe begins, and then it moves on, and it begins maybe your cooking. So, in 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 that sense, you know from telling it or, you know, speaking it, to writing it, to printing it, mm. to texting it, that message I don't think changed at all. Uh, what I think that's changed dramatically is, is the weight we put on it, the weight that we put on a recipe. Suddenly, it's the most important thing. It's mm. the interaction is, I think, the most important thing. So it's kind of like a little bit of a card trick. It's a distraction. Do you know what I mean? I guess if it's written, then then it's open to interpretation and variances. One of the, maybe when you get video content that's mm. 
step by step and literal, people will take even more of a literal approach to, to what it is. And yet they'll still come back and say, I made your lamb meatballs, but I used aubergines. Yeah. <laughs> no, it wasn't, wasn't very good. Uh, but it doesn't, it doesn't change the act. You know, we, all of you guys, we're talking here about teaching. You know, that's the thing. You're teaching all your people, you're teaching all your people, you're teaching all your people. This is the act. You cook and you pass it on. And this is not, the essence is not different. No. It's just kind of like, the, it's a technical issue. What I think, though, is actually through social media, recipes have got simplified more. And simplified, but also more in detail. It, it's a, it, a weird one to explain how I'm trying, well, try and describe this like a human. Okay, uh, so I go through every recipe that I do and try and make it the simplest version of that, but with the most detail so people can't, can't change too many things or interpret it wrong. Yeah. Right, idiot proof. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Not going to say that. Um, but it's no, not so not a bad it, thing to say. So it's, uh, I suppose so, it's that people of any stage in cookery can try and absorb that information and use it and, and change it as it goes on. So I think social media is definitely it's in a switch because if you look at like Mrs. Beaton's books but from back, back in the day, it doesn't even give you a weight, it doesn't give you a time, you're just expected to know what these things are, which I suppose might actually make it easier for people to make a recipe because they're free to interpret that however they want. And also there's no pictures and no videos. So you don't know how it's going to turn out. So you assume it's right. Mm. But now we have all of the information and you can see step by step on a, on a video. Um, so maybe it, it feels like if something does go a bit wrong, then it's even more dramatic than... I don't, I don't know. In my, I simplify it and also try and put as much detail in as possible. It's, it's a weird kind of mix for me. Okay. Yeah, but I think I think what you uh, what you're asking is how the social media has changed. Is that what you? Because I I feel that social media has kind of diluted the strength of the quality. At the same time, it's opened doors, like I said earlier, to you know uh, to helping us uh, reach the people who you know we couldn't have ever seen what they're cooking or how they're cooking in different parts of the world. But at the same time what is available is you have to really sift through crap to get to the good part. <laughs> but it's, you know, it's yeah. true. I mean, th th that's the thing, there's, you know, maybe one recipe is more popular than the other, one has a bigger reach than the other, but it's essentially the same. It's what you're looking for, you, mm. you will find. Yeah. You know, it's pretty much all there. And the act of whether you're giving like a super elaborate recipe for, you know, a souffle with, I don't know, some rare ingredient, or you're giving, you know, baked feta with pasta, the act is the same. We're not, you know, it's just the level of detail and yeah. the quantity. Um, sorry, are we done? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's it, social media is fixed. <laughs> <laughs> New dawn is rising on us tomorrow. <laughs> no, 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 it's, I'm glad that you did that. Why didn't you do it two How hours How brilliant ago? was that? <laughs> uh, yeah, Speaking of someone who doesn't love social media, I actually now feel a bit kind of revved up to, you know, get my head around it and enjoy it so much more. That was really inspiring and really no, fun. So, <laughs> <laughs> I was so great. Thank you so much, Ed, Poppy, Chetna, but especially <laughs> no, right? Ishmael for such brilliant navigation through all of that for us. Thank you so much. These guys are going to be outside and there are books to buy, there are signatures to be made on them and they might even carry on the conversation a little bit as well. So please do take advantage of that. And there's loads more to come with the food season as well. It's all online. We're here through until middle-ish of June. So please do come back to the British Library food season. But for now, thank you all so very, very much. Oh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you.